The markets are finally hitting their pullback strides. We're seeing declines of 3% on the S&P 500. And for BTC, we are still down since the top that came in on the 13th of July. But is this the time that we're going to see the new fresh lows get taken out? The price targets that everyone is waiting for, $20,000 on BTC. And for the S&P, they are looking for big pullbacks underneath previous support levels. Let's take a look at that in today's video and what we could expect moving forward into quarter three for Bitcoin and for the stock markets. This is the critical time that most will get wrong. We know this because that is the statistics. Over 90% of traders and investors get the markets wrong time and time again, and not just to buy a little bit, but by a lot. Most missed out on the huge upside gains from the S&P since October of 2022. And we know they missed out on it on Bitcoin as well from November 2022, because we still hear the calls that they expect prices to come back and take out those lows. And I want to show you in today's video, while that's probably not likely at all, but where we could likely see the price head to with a correction, a most wanted correction, a correction that is necessary for the healthy movement and the healthy digestion of the bull market so we can continue up and take out some of these tops. You are at your home of macro cycle analysis. This is where we study the past to forecast the future. There is plenty of content on the channel. We're going to pay particular attention to videos like this today, warning the most wanted Bitcoin and uh, S&P crash, basically the pullback that everyone is waiting for, because this is what most will miss out on. This is how they get it wrong so early on in the movement. All right, guys, let's take a look at the S&P. So this is the, the daily at the moment, and this will carry us over to the rest of our analysis for Bitcoin as well. Now, the, the daily movement here is down 0.5%. The pullback that a lot are waiting for is probably now. The main thing that we were following on the way up was timeframes on the weekly movements. So you could see that we had 16 weeks up from the cycle low. So this is October 2022. And we were calling it at the time. The videos are on the channel. The tweets are on X now, x.com. But looking at this being the bottom of the market, basically the movement down, while we still had a lot of calls for recession, we still have that now for crazy reasons, and calls for further crashes because of how the economy is shaping up. But remember, we don't trade the economy, we trade the market. And the only thing, the only thing that is important is the price, because that is what we trade. We don't trade what the fundamental analysts are trying to tell us about how the market should crash and how the market should come back down because they've been wrong and they're basically wrong or 90% of them are wrong and they're basically wrong 90% of the time. They're wrong so often, it's a joke really. So just follow the chart, let's just follow the price because that is gonna give us the answers and it's gonna help us beat the majority of people. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button as well. It does go a long way to pushing this video out to more so they can see how this is done rather than lose money, I guess. So looking at where we currently sit, these were the lows. March was a hugely critical time in the market. That was where I got extra long as well because of how severe the news was. We had the banking crisis, yet the market has pumped from that point. So we're looking at the next correction now. It's important to remember those points there because we've seen a lot of the fear in the market. And the only fear that we really see now is that we're expecting a correction. We've had the debt ceiling crisis. We've had all the other crises that are basically told to us that the market should fall. So what we've seen is 16 weeks up to that point there before we got the collapse into uh, the March banking crisis. And now we have seen the market from that point rise 19 weeks. So pretty similar here. Remember, history doesn't repeat exactly, but it rhymes. So if this is the pause now, it would come right in on time for the S&P. And we have the similar sort of timings here for the NASDAQ as well. But let's just look at the S&P for now. So if we've got this pullback, finally, now, what can we expect to the downside? Well, we know from previous analysis that pullbacks 
in these bull markets, in uh, bull markets that basically just get going. Remember, we've just got going from October. We're not even 12 months into this bull market yet. We don't often see pullbacks of double digits. Early on, sure, you can get the pullbacks of double digits. We didn't even get it into the March collapse. Can you believe that? The banking crisis, the time that everything had to fall and burn. Everyone was in, in on it expecting lower and lower prices. We managed 8.7%. So think about that when it comes to market sentiment and the price action. We don't have anything like what we had in March with a banking collapse, which really wasn't a collapse at the end of the day, because otherwise we would have gone lower. That's the market telling us, not my opinion, but this is just what is the, uh, what the market is telling us. So if we look at something like a 9%, a 9%, 8.7, like we got for the banking crisis, almost dead on to that exact point, takes us all the way back to the tops. So it's almost like a perfect level there. I'm not saying that we're going to get there, but even if we did, it's basically sitting on old resistance, which would potentially become support. And that's a perfect area for uh, ongoing bull market. You have a correction and a, and, a, and a move up higher again. This is just the digestion of the move. Now, I don't expect it to get that low because a lot of people are hoping that it comes back to those prices. And I don't think it's going to happen. But if we do get these single digit corrections, we can look back to some of the previous swing lows, 4.8%, previous uh, next low, 5.7%. And if we look to the 50% level as well, top to the 50%, we're at 6%. So it's well within the single digit movements. We want to see how this affects Bitcoin as well. But remember, this is something that we've been following through the entire bear market and at the lows and then got in on this going north when the majority of people missed out on it for obvious reasons. They think the market is going to collapse. Prices are higher. Now, I've got a mammoth amount of data to get through for the S&P and Bitcoin, but I want to give you a quick reminder that the World Series of Trading is on right now with Bybit. There's $8 million price pool that you can be a part of. And if you want to join our members then click the link in the top of the video description, $8 million trading competition right there. You'll come across here. You can join our squad and be part of the trading competition. If you're wanting to learn how to trade, the second link there is for our members here. That these, This is what the guys are doing day in, day out, trading crypto, making very significant gains. Nice 100% there, 40%. And from the previous day that I showed you here, beautiful hundreds, hundreds, 60%. And of course, everyone is real. There are losses as well. So pay particular attention to your trading plans, learn more, link in the top of the video description. And the second link there will teach you more about trading. All right, back to the data. Now there's a couple of uh, good data points here that we were looking at for new all time highs in 2023. And this also works in well with the Bitcoin accumulation sections of the S&P. We typically see the S&P go into new all-time highs before Bitcoin, of course, and I don't think it's going to be any, any different this time. The differences to make this thing rhyme, remember, remember nothing is exactly the same, but the, the rhyming here is that maybe it's going to take us a little longer to get into the all-time high, but I think it's still going to happen within our two-year Bitcoin accumulation zone that we've covered here on the channel before. So I've explained all that uh, plenty of times. But you can see earlier on in some of these other Bitcoin accumulation areas, uh, for the years here, 2015 into late 2016, there was an early new all-time high for the S&P. You can see here again, we had an earlier new all-time high here in 2019 for the S&P, but Bitcoin was still just putting in uh, new movements to the upside. We got to $14,000 in that stage. So we're looking at the corrections and we're looking at what can potentially happen for the S&P in 2023, looking at all-time highs. So looking at some of this data here, uh, this was one that we brought up the other day. So just as a reminder, S&P climbed within 5% of a new all-time high. So it has done that. It's gone within 5% of the top for the first time in greater than 200 days. So it's gone to 5% with, uh, within 5% of the all-time high within 200 days. When this happens, it takes typically 46 trading days before the gap is filled and it gets a new all time high. So everything is still on track for the Bitcoin bull market, for the S&P bull market. And basically Bitcoin just takes that little bit longer before it gets into its own all time high. And then it's in an all time high uh, phase stage 
for less time than the S&P. That's what we need to know. We need to know about time. We don't need to know about Bitcoin will hit 100 grand or it will hit 200. That is your fool's game. If you're just new to the, to the game, that's what happens in every previous cycle. Everyone's waiting for this price target. What's your price target? What's it going to hit? Who cares? We'll make up some numbers because that's what people want to hear. But as long as you know, that's an absolute fool's game because every time you bring up a price target, you sort of get stuck on that psychologically. It screws you. You don't get to, to get those gains. The best thing we can do is figure out the timing of the market. And this is what a lot of people get wrong. If you can get that timing roughly right using some of the analysis that we look at as well, that is going to help us figure out when the end is near. We don't need the exact date, but just around that time. And whatever the price is at that time, game over. We take our profits, we get out, and we move on. So this particular data here has said approximately 46 trading days. That's the, the median. But what if it takes a little longer? We've got two, uh, 228 days is one of the longest here. One of the shortest was 17. So we can't say it's 17 anymore because we've had 17 or we'll be coming up very close to 17 trading days since this particular signal. So within 5%. So it got to within 5% back here in July and on the daily here, uh, 17 trading days would take us out to August 10th. So we're not going to get a new all-time high by August 10th because we're uh, probably, potentially, going through the correction at the moment. So we've looked to the downside where these corrections could come uh, somewhere around that sort of 43 or 4,400 points <clears throat> at an extreme. And then that would set us up for the digestion of the next move higher. So with a relatively subdued correction, it's probably not going to be so bad for BTC as well. But I guess bad is dependent upon what your definition of bad is. Do we get bad to 27,000 and that is really bad? Or is bad 22,000 in your books? It's all dependent on what you believe bad is. We'll have a look at that in just a sec. So we've looked at this correction here. Now, the other piece of data uh, for the upside for the S&P, we need to have corrections, remember? That's what we've been waiting for. The timing has come into it. Uh, we can see that 200-day moving average for the S&P has now risen for 40 consecutive days, reaching a level that has historically foreshadowed an all-clear sign for stocks. So from the 200-day moving average, it's risen 40 days. So this is the 200-day moving average. And from that point there on the 6th of June, the average or the 200-day uh, there is 39.89. Okay, so it just started to creep up from that point again. Now, it did creep up earlier on, but then it also plateaued here throughout May. So we want 40 consecutive days of movement up. So the sixth is here, 40 days is 40 trading days, not just typical days, uh, regular days, is till uh, the bar on Thursday. So we've got that. Now, all this is saying is if the market was bought at the 40th trading day, uh, yes, the 40th trading day after the 200 day moving average, on more often than not, you're going to see pretty significant profits. There are a ton of data points here and what we're concerned with is the longer term. We're looking at the macro here because uh, that's basically what we've been focusing on for the cycle of BTC. And we wanna see this upside, this new all time high for the S&P 500. So 12 months later, there are a lot of data points here. We can look uh, to how often it has played out and it's played out 78% of the time. So close to 80%, basically four out of five times, it is a positive reading after 40 consecutive days of the 200 day moving average increasing in price. The average max gain is 14% from this point. Now the amount of times we've gone through a lot of this data on the channel going all the way back to the cycle lows and early in 2023 and just looking at how much gain to the upside we were expecting, it's pretty wild to think that we still have more and more upside to go. But nonetheless, that is what the data is telling us. Remember that the markets typically rhyme, they don't have to repeat exactly. And it's nice that they haven't repeated exactly because the rhyming here is that they've gone up, but they've gone up way more than a lot of the data has suggested. Now, I'm not focusing on the bearish data because it's been completely wrong. Hit the like and subscribe button if you've been here the entire time and you've seen how this has played out using this data, using our technical analysis to continue to be on the right side of the market longer term. So that's where we're looking at. Upsides here 
even though we're getting a correction. A correction is healthy, correction is good. We've looked at this being a single digit. The timing seems pretty well on point. We've looked at August as potentially being that time. And of course, many are looking towards September. So this is that time where we have to think about, is it going to be a sideways correction within those single digits? I tend to think so. I don't think we're gonna get this big move to the downside that takes out any of these previous significant points. I think these are all pretty safe areas. This is probably another safe area as well, which means single digits, that's all we're gonna get for the S&P 500. Of course, that's my analysis. Do your own research as well. That is basically what the data has suggested. Uh, for the NASDAQ, pretty similar as well. Now we've got to look at Bitcoin and we'll focus on the NASDAQ in future videos as well. But essentially it's saying a very, very similar thing. If this is the topping out point here, we go single digits or just on 10% there to our 50% level using our weekly movements up, pretty much sets us up with some of those lows there as well at the 14,000 point level. So we'll keep an eye on this as well. But remember, the NASDAQ is up over 50%. You have to expect a slightly bigger pullback after such a mega move, a mega move that majority missed out on. Of course, 53% to that top from the cycle low to the top. This is also going to see new all-time highs potentially in 2023, maybe in 2024. But let's just get over the consolidation and the correction. If we get a nice sideways grind here in the correction, this is going to move pretty significantly once the correction is over. Same sort of deal for the uh, uh, Dow Jones as well. It's just broken out of some of these tops, single digits to the downside or maybe back into the zone here is nothing out of the ordinary. Now for Bitcoin, it's been a while. Let's have a look. We've looked at our 50% levels as potential correction areas. So this is the shortest term time frame here. And just the other day, we bounced off that 50%, very close to it by about 170 odd dollars. and we suggested that maybe, like last time, we might fade out into that low again. There really isn't anything that is pumping up this market at the moment. There is not that much positive news that everyone is waiting on. However, the price really hasn't collapsed from that point. We had a single day of collapse here on the 24th of July. And basically from that point, it's just been a methodical, slow grind lower. So that is one positive for the bulls as this market digests each of these moves. Now, of course, we want to look to the downside as well. The other thing that is not the greatest for the bulls is that these movements now are getting uh, less and less. So you can see the movements up. I'm going to use it from the cycle low, from this low to the top. Now, this low to the top is half of the previous moves. So if you know anything about our 50% levels, that is a critical time for the market to overcome. So I'm using the previous range from the low. You wanna see how much this market's gone up and it's failed so far at the 50% level. You can see it just has not overcome $30,500. But while the market remains above its 50% and above its low, then the market is basically grinding out here. There's just nothing going on for BTC to get it to go higher or to get it to go lower. You can see in the shorter term here, the 50% is at 28,300. So that's a critical level for Bitcoin to remain above. And then if it breaks down from that, we can look uh, to the market to be able to test high 24s to the high $26,000 levels. But again, we still have more support further back should it break down into the weaker half of the 50% level. So two key areas that we're gonna keep an eye on, even though the market is basically grinding down, if we continue to get the correction on the S&P, I've suggested that it's probably not going to be anything super severe. It's the most wanted because a lot of people missed out on the movement from the lows. It's the most wanted. People want this big correction, remember, but I don't think they're going to get it. And that's typical of bull markets. It's not going to give people what they want and they're going to miss out on any of the smaller gains that they were basically hoping for bigger gains. And that's what continues to fuel on bigger moves. So we're going to keep watching 43 to 4,400 points on the S&P. Meanwhile, for BTC, if it continues just to grind over this period of time throughout August and September, it's probably not the worst thing for it while the S&P isn't also pumping or at least moving higher. Because remember, Bitcoin has basically been sideways since this movement up in March. Meanwhile, the S&P has gone on a wild move 
from the lows in March all the way to the top. You know, it's not that time for Bitcoin to break out into these new huge price targets, but it's that grind away time. So stay with the market. If you've got your DCA plans, now would be a time to refresh them and have a look at where those next points are for you. I've given you ideas of the critical areas that the market must hold. I don't think we're going to break and hold underneath $20,000. That is the key level that the majority are hoping and waiting for as well. And they're probably not going to get it. Remember, Bitcoin can do crazy things. If we get wicks, we get wicks. But that's not what I'm talking about. Wicks are wicks because of the liquidity in the market. Sometimes it just doesn't have that liquidity. But in terms of consolidation, I, I can't see us consolidating under $20,000. I've been on record for that for months now saying that these lows are in. 15500 is in. Most likely 19500 and 20K is in. And as soon as we can get above that 32K, I will say that this low is going to hold. But let's see uh, what happens over the coming days and weeks. The good news for the bulls, market's just grinding away here. A test of 28.3, not the worst thing. A test down into this lower range, not the worst thing either, because we're probably just grinding our way sideways before we can start to make that move again. Remember, August and September aren't typically the times that we get those moves. A grind sideways is a healthy movement for the bulls before we can get on this movement later in potentially quarter four of 2023. Like and subscribe, guys. Remember, in the top of the video description is a, a trading competition going on now, the World Series of Trading with Bybit. If you want to be part of the $8 million trading competition prize pool link is down there uh, and you can join our trading squad the top one percent and get on board with some more trading over there all right until the next video have a fantastic weekend i'll see you back here again very soon till then peace out